Hey everybody and welcome back. <clears throat> well, it's first thing Monday morning. I've done anything at all yet. Um, we are expecting a storm to come through later today and the prediction is 8 to 12 inches of snow for us. So I can see a day tomorrow on the tractor. In fact, it might still be snowing through tomorrow, so who knows. Anyway, <clears throat> We will press on with the never-ending project. As I say, we really have become just a workshop blog and you're spending time with me in here. Nothing special happening. Uh, but we'll get that done and then... Had, say it's Monday morning, I've already had a, a, a bunch of suggestions about what to do next. Uh, and a few about bantams. But as you know, bantams are two strokes. Plus, actually, bantams are not easy to find here. And someone mentioned a Harley Hummer, which is the sort of Harley version of a bantam. You know, uh, both came from the DKW design. That were war reparations after the Second World War. But they're even harder to find. So, don't think it's going to be a bantam. I had a few votes for the single cylinder Honda engines. I do actually have, kicking around somewhere, I think it's, a, I'm not sure what size it is. I was given a Honda single engine years ago. It's pretty heavy. And one of the things I don't like about the Japanese singles is they're a bit tall. Um, first of all, they're wet sump. So the crankcase is deeper. And then secondly, their overhead cam, which means the cylinder head is taller. And they tend to be two or three inches taller than a similar sized uh, ordinary dry sump push rod engine, a la BSA. So anyway, it's um, a little while before we have to make our decision. And then, as I mentioned, it's always dependent on what I can get hold of. So we will keep all that in mind and keep thinking about that. Um, I also had a couple of comments. It's funny, you know, I've never had a brilliant memory, a particularly short-term memory. You know, I'll do something and go and do something else and come back and I can't remember what I was doing or uh, I, I used to do a lot of computer programming at one time and I would work out how to do a particular uh, action in the program and then you know, a couple of weeks later, I'd need to do that again. And I wouldn't be able to remember how I did it. I'd have to go back and look in the code that I'd written and say, oh yeah, that's how I made that procedure work. And uh, seeing as I wasn't a particularly tidy programmer and I didn't put lots of little notations in to say things, that was always a bugger. But, uh, so I had a couple of comments about bending the tube. And it brought to mind something which I found over the years with YouTube. That people will mention things and I'll think to myself, I know that. You know, why didn't I do that? Or why didn't I mention that? Or why did I say that when I know it's not right? Just a little something to jog my mind. One of the things that Linda mentions is I have this incredible, one thing I do have a memory for, are song lyrics. I mean, even things like I can sing for those of you in the UK. I know the Ovaltine song and stuff like that. And even sort of popular songs from the 50s. And I was born in 51, so I obviously didn't really hear them. But the thing about it is, if you asked me for the particular lyrics of a song, I'd probably say, no, can't remember. If you start playing the tune and within a couple of bars, it just reawakens what's there. So I guess it's the difference between not remembering something, which I would think of as losing the memory, and not being able to recall something. Hmm. So anyway, there's a little bit of workshop philosophy for you. So what are we going to do? Well, I've got to clean this off because we're going to put the bike up on here. Um, I hadn't had to before, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the welder in. I'm going to do the mudguard stays in situ. So I didn't want to be leaning over. And actually, I don't think the cables 
for the welder will reach over there. So I'll put the bike up and also of course if I'm going to weld on it I'm going to take the tank off and disconnect all the electronics so that nothing is connected to the frame so I can't accidentally send a little uh, peak of electricity into anything and do any damage. So let me tidy up. I told you I found the other lever, didn't I? Yes, I did. So I've got to make one of those sleeves to go in that. Uh, obviously my tube and, and flat came. So, oh! <laughs> the whole point of that stuff about memory was because a couple of people mentioned that the tube, I should pack it with sand so that when I bend it, it can't deform. And I thought, yeah, why didn't I do that? I know that. So anyway, under the bead blaster, I've got a great big tub, which is um, sort of used blasting media. Just haven't had time to dispose of it. So I have a big tub underneath and when I change it, I just take the little cover off the bottom and, it, and I put new in. So that is basically uh, just gla ground glass. So it's it's silica, silicon dioxide, just the same as sand. So, and it's nice and dry because that's the big thing that I do remember from when you pack a tube with sand to keep its shape while you form it, you've got to use dry sand because you're going to heat it up. And if you have the ends sealed up, and you heat it up and it's wet, you'll, you know, the water will uh, boil off and you get steam and steam's bigger than the water or volume is. So, <laughs> Anyway, you can see there may be problems. So let me get everything ready and then we'll see about doing the front loop that I've done because I've had a thought of a way to do the little tab. And uh, anyway, let's, let's get on and do some stuff. All right, it's up on the table. I took the tank off and when I took the tank off, I realized that actually none of the electrics are under the tank. They're all under here. So, luckily the side panels just come off with the uh, Zuss fasteners, Zuss or however you pronounce it. So, let me get all this disconnected and uh, then we'll see about doing this front mud guard, the actual front stay. Well, I've got the hoop taped to the fork so it's in the right place. I've made my little tab up, drilled it, I've just dropped a bolt into line the holes up. Now what I'm going to do, you see I've put a bit of tape on, is I've got a piece of 332nd welding rod here. Got the welder set to spot. I'm going to spot that to the weld to the mudguard stay and then spot it or weld it to that. That shouldn't put too much heat on. Right, if I do this end then I can do that end then and just whip it straight off off the mudguard and I don't think will damage the paint <clears throat> all right so let me try that all right so that worked so let me bronze this on here and then we'll uh, bronze it to the plates on the forks There's that bronzed on there. I'm sort of holding this in front of the camera with it on auto focus. So we'll go out of focus while I turn it around. Oh, that's awful. Anyway, there it is, safely bronzed on. Right, so there's the first one on. It's got its bolt there, just holding it. And it's bronzed on both sides. I'll do the insides when I take it off. So now we're going to make this. Yeah, you can see this real loop, which, as I say, is uh, God. I don't have a bleeding straight edge. Would you credit it? Nope, that's not long enough. Hang on. Right, I'm back. So from there to go on to there. Oh, it's hardly any angle at all here. Just a few degrees. So this end's going to have the slightest little kink in it to just kick it up slightly to get to there. 
All right, I just changed the tungsten as well in the welder because I today the last couple of bits of welding I've done every now and again I suddenly get this intense white light like there's you know some uh, what's the word I'm looking for hey but this is getting bad isn't it like there's some contaminant in the weld puddle or whatever and um, it's happened with alloy and steel welding I don't know what it is so anyway I've changed the chunks and it didn't happen with that so let me go and cut a piece of tube and let me fill it with sand and bung the ends up with a couple of bits of wood or something all right then it's coming up to lunchtime so we'll do this that'll give it a chance to cool down one piece of tube full of fine sand I had one slight mishap the plug snapped off here so I'll have to drill that out or something but anyway both ends are plugged it's marked there so that goes in there like that lost me there it is I'll bring it closer in when we start to heat this up. Got my bolt to stick through there. Actually, I brought a screwdriver to be a little bit of a wedge as well. So let's zoom you in. And if this blows up, I know to blame. You ready? seeing people doing this thumbs up stuff of course our nice Mr Trump keeps doing this not going to talk politics but that man is a complete arsehole all right we will let that cool down while I go on have a sarnie it looks good doesn't it you people know what you're talking about I should listen to you more often right just got to hope it's the right length now. All right, I am suitably fortified.
Let's see if this worked. Most of it is good. It's gone in a little bit here. And while I was putting the sand in, I was tapping and tapping and tapping to make sure it all went down. Anyway, the important thing is it's four and a quarter inches there. And it's four and a quarter inches there. So let's go and check it on the bike. Well, it almost fits perfectly. And I'll tell you what, the reason it doesn't is because of the little pinch. See here we're perfect, they're just round here, that little pitch where you can see that flattened slightly, that's what's doing it. Oh, excuse me. Alright, well that was a gentleman from Colorado who just been watching this week's video and said I mentioned the Honda 175 twin and he happened to have an engine. Uh, this really has been very kind of a lot of people it's it's one of the nicest things about being on on YouTube so we talked about it a little bit and I decided no I more or less decided I wasn't gonna do a twin anyway so that's gonna go on there like thus so there's the line of that so that has got to be bent up just like that so let me work out the angle it should be and then we'll do that bend and there it is all finished I didn't get this bit right look they came out the wrong lens and I wanted this to go right along there so I just put a piece in when it's painted I've got to seal these ends up. Other than that, I don't think that came out too badly. And that is it for today. I'll away and as I say, I might wake up in the morning to a foot of snow. We will see. So whenever I see you next, I'll see you next. Right then, well, good morning. It's Tuesday. And when I got up this morning and looked out the window, everything was still green. <clears throat> Apparently the storm tracked a little further south. We didn't get anything at all. So that's good news. All right, so there's that all finished. All I'm gonna do is paint it. I think that looks pretty damn smart. Good and strong. I noticed looking through the viewfinder, these lights, they make that orange, it's a really bright red. But anyway, let me take that off there and prime it. And uh, then during the course of the day while I paint it, you'll see, you can see why I wanted them to go all the way along. I didn't want to have a, a sort of dead end for this tube. So let's go, oh, I've, I've filled the ends in as well. So that's all done. That's the last big job. So as I was just going to say, while that paint is uh, getting put on and drying between coats and stuff, we're going to look at this kickstart spring. All right. Now this actually seems to be stiff. not catching on the casing see right so I'll take the gear lever off drop down and take this off take this cover off actually I just had a thought and we seem to have the same problem as we had with the B44 all I've done is crack those case screws So, hang on. 
let me tighten them back up tight 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 Elbows, then it's one of the signs of getting old, huh? I mean, it was working fine before, before we laid it up. I'm missing a screw as well. I wonder why I didn't have that screw in. Oh, hang on, tighten that one. I forget we have these three BA ones, two BA. I obviously didn't, I think that's a very long one. I must have not had a very long one. Now these should be UNC. So I think I've got some long UNC ones since then. Now what was that? I'm not taking things apart if they're working. Let me find a screw for that. Right, well. I'll leave that. If that kickstart starts playing up again, then I'll uh, I'll have a look at it. But let's shifty at this. As well because these fuel lines have got fuel in them. But they're not draining out. Yeah right. Let's take them off. Two, 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 two. Is that it? That was good news about the snow. Middle of February and I've only been out once really. We had one snowstorm that dropped about I don't know, six or eight inches. Well that's just stuck in there tight. do sort of turn easier where the little shoulder is, a little recess I should say.
Okay. Well, nothing in the filter. Don't see anything in the bottom. Must be just different levels. All right. Now let's see if we can get this floor off. Let's go down. Good, this is tight as well. This is the way it's rubbing, the handle's rubbing on this. Rubber breather tube. that one out. I should have just said I'll take this out and bring you back shouldn't I? a long way out. That should come up to being, what is it, a sixteenth of an inch off the top? Oh, maybe it's better. Hmm. I have had trouble in the past with ticklers. Oh, it's around your side. Right, let me have a little fiddle on with this. Right, well, I'll check the float level and everything. It seems to be sticking. As I say, I have had trouble in the past with those sort of sticking and holding the float down. And actually, with the monoblocks, if the whole the vent hole gets bunged up, uh, the car will flood. Because instead of the air getting out of here as the float chamber fills up, well the monoblock of course it's on the side here, it just fills up and comes out into the choke. Alright, next thing for me to do then is to put all this back together. So let me reconnect all the wires and then we'll lower the bike and have a look at that uh, horn connection. Alright, well, I think I sorted out the wiring. I had, uh, where is it? You may remember this. I did a load of wiring diagrams and I also matched up all the different colours. So I think I've got it right. Carburetor's still flooding, so I don't know if that float is sinking, although it's one of the steel floats that you pay extra for. But worse than that, all it's doing is kicking back. It's firing every time I kick it but it's just kicking back so if I haven't touched ignition timing why is it advanced now? Ooh, isn't life a bugger? Alright let me see what's going on. Oh I've got the first coat of red on the mudguard stairs as well. Alright well check the ignition timing, took the side cover off and everything else. It was spot on. So I've kept fiddling around, kept getting the, it kicking back. I think the float is sticking in here because you turn the petrol on and leave it, it doesn't flood. Tickle it, it does flood. So when it started to flood with a tickle, I tapped it with a pair of pliers 
and it stopped flooding. So I think it's just when you press the float down, it's sticking down. So I'll have a little look at that. It still kept kicking back, kicking back, and then just this last time it started and it ran. And everything seems to work. So let's see if I can kick it and start it again. So, horn's a little bit anemic, but uh, I worked everything out. Alright, so I can put the side panels back on. I've still got to look at that little bit, the uh, floor. The rebuild kit came for the caliper, so I can do that. I'm still going to have to send another order off to them. Look, because... That's a good eight inches too long. Uh, I tried rooting it round here and it looked awful. So that's why I like using these fittings. You know, if I'd have bought a hose, I'd have been, you know, quids out. But here I can just these come apart, I can just buy another hose, don't have to buy the fittings and then I'll put that to one side and who knows, might use it on something else. Uh, oh, actually, come to think of it, this course is the hose that goes with the other forks, so I actually need, I won't be missing out on anything, I'll just buy the length of hose, it's just annoying that it's going to be the third order down at Mike's excess. All right, done the red paint, did that just before I went to lunch. So I'll clear coat that this afternoon. Let me get on, build a caliper. Well, I've done it again. You know, when I'm building things up out of several different bikes, I get confused. There's the piston. And, uh, you know, now I've got the front wheel and everything right from a Yamaha XS650, not a Heritage Special. So I ordered a caliper rebuild kit for an XS650, not a Heritage Special, which is what the caliper came off. Couldn't be much more different, could they? Okay. So hopefully I can send this back because this bit wasn't cheap. I thought the kit didn't look right. There seemed to be more seals and stuff than I needed. So, <laughs> oh well, I'll send this stuff back and order the, uh, the right bits. Right, well, there it is, all sorted with our nice new front end. I've ordered the I'm just going to finish this project. I'm not going to hang on and hang on for the last little things. I've ordered the caliper rebuild kit. Last night I found the right, the right piston and the right rebuild kit and I ordered them and I came downstairs and I'm sitting there and I suddenly thought, you dummy, you didn't order the new hose. So I rushed back to the computer and order a 33 inch hose which will just go down. I think that front mud guard stay and everything looks gorgeous. Alright. So come the spring, I'll put that up for sale. I think that's worth five thousand dollars of anybody's money. And uh, actually these forks are 
fractionally shorter so we've got a better angle at the front. The other forks I actually had to push them up through the yokes and I couldn't just push them up where I wanted because you know this is at the top. That was actually tapered and the two ends where they went in the yokes were different diameters so I only had a little bit to play, play with. But that I think is nice and I feel a lot more confident about those forks and that brake doing the job. So we know all the electrics work. I don't know the speedo works because I obviously haven't ridden it but it came guaranteed as working so that should be all fine. I'm going to make a couple of little clips. Well actually I don't think I need to. On the Yam 650 the fork mountain is a bridge, a wide bridge that just comes up. So there's nothing back here. So there's a little thing that goes on there to hold, to catch hold of the uh, hose. And on the other side, I think the mud guard is sort of drilled about here with a little loop with rubber in it for the speedo. But we're not going to have the problem of it bumping against the uh, oh, dirty finger mark. Oh, because we've got this. So I can always make a little clip up to go onto there if I feel it's necessary. But anyway, what's that? Four weeks? Huh. Anyway, there it is. 500 single. You may remember it's the MX engine. Disc brake on the back. Nice big disc brake on the front. I'm not going to say better forks because it had the four stud BSA forks in and they are really good forks. But it's now got indicators and all manner of things. Batteryless ignition, batteryless things, the little rack we made for the back. I think that's cute. I'm really pleased with this tank. Yeah, beautiful. Alright, so that's it for this week and I mean you've already seen it but I'm not sure exactly what time I'll be posting it because Saturday night is our uh, trials clubs non-banquet banquet as they call it so I'm not sure what time I'll get back on Sunday but I should be back for lunchtime but you know it's all moot because you're already seeing this right now next week I am going to make some mods and work on the frame jig. I've been giving that a lot of thought. Talk more about it next week. But uh, that's what we'll be doing next week. Then I might take a week or two off. Because my acquisitions have gone through. I really want to keep it a surprise for you. Uh, and they won't be coming until I think the second week in March. So we might find a couple of things to do for the next couple of weeks and then who knows. All right. So anyway, at last, that's all done. So until I see you again, you stay safe and enjoy yourselves.